flashing in the light here. Could you just hold that ring up? That's very beautiful indeed, isn't it? Can we get a possible close-up on the camera on that? Now, I'll, I'll just hold this in. Now, that is what I call a fair old rock. <laughs> All right? Yes. And um, is it a glass or a zircon or what? No, it's a diamond. Oh, it is a diamond. Oh, that's awfully nice, isn't it? What an awfully nice diamond. This could be on the way to someone else's house tonight. Right, now. And uh, what would you say a little tinselitis like that was worth? About £300,000. hi ya 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 This is no mere chance, because this lady is called Caroline. She's sitting here with a man called Michael, who is security for Caroline. But I'm going to take her away from him for a little while, and he's going to sit very worried. She is from Cartier, and that is why we know the ring is genuine, and it's the only one like that in the world. Please take a walk with me into the past. Well, we're in the drawing room, which was very reminiscent, actually, of the stage set of Robert Houdin, this great French magician, who would borrow a finger ring each evening. Sometimes, perhaps, worth possibly as much as this. It's not yours, is it? And Michael, still sitting in the audience, is charged with the security of the ring. Please place it into the centre of the handkerchief. Now, there it resides. You can see it. Yes? Actually, if I do this, you can feel it. Yes? yes. There is no possible chance that that can be got out of that little bundle. No? I'm doing this all at fingertips so that you can see it. Now, we do not have a wall safe for you, madam. I'm awfully sorry. I'm going to place it into a jewellery casket, a compartment which is made of glass. We shall place it in the centre and we shall just do this. And now, while it's sitting there, I want you to look at this. This is a pistol. And this pistol it will be fired by cocking it like so, and then it will be fired. Now, if I do that, all right, it's now safe. Hold it. You are holding a piece of magical history. Over here is some other piece of magical history. If I can just move this, I need to be behind it to, to do it properly. This is a, a gavel. What to my bid, ladies and gentlemen, for this beautiful rig? Do I hear two shillings and sixpence? Yes? Pardon? Didn't you read the small print in the contract? We can sell it for whatever we want. No? Oh, all right then. I'd best explain what the pistol was used for. In days of yore, this would be used for firing a watch, a bracelet, small piece of jewellery, into the air, where it would be smashed to smithereens. But, of course, it would only disappear. To place it in there is our next charge. What we do is we just take this from here. There's the ring. And we put it inside here. And it won't go. So, all we do... Is we flatten it. A gentleman in the audience has gone quite white. And we just... Don't worry, dear boy. And we do that. Now, you hold that because it's your ring. Keep it there while I introduce to you the piece of recreated beautiful mechanism that John Gorn has made. This is known as the orange tree. It's brought on by the ever-lovely Debbie wearing a beautiful dress. Gorgeous you look tonight. And this tree, known as the orange tree, was one of the great mysteries of its day. All you have to do is you have to point the pistol yourself. I'll just cock it for you, madam, like that. And you fire the gun, therefore taking all blame <laughs> for the 300,000 pounds of ring. Point at the tree and shoot. For a small gun, it makes a loud noise. <laughs> and now the tree. I want to tell you about the tree. Normally, it would now start to work. But I wanted to show you that this is clockwork, and it is. And all you do is you wind it up. It's a beautiful thing, this. This is Brazilian rosewood, which was collected by John, actually from Brazil and brought back. The velvet on the sides is antique, and it comes from Belgium, antique velvet. And all the brassware around was made by the company who might well indeed 
might well indeed have made it for Robert Houdin himself. It's such a beautiful piece. And if you watch the tree very carefully, you should see somewhere on it little flowers start to appear. And you can see there's one just coming here. The orange blossom appears there. Here is another one. Up here is another one. This mechanical marvel would create orange blossom. And then, as the audience watched in those days of old, the, the leaves would start to move and oranges would appear on the orange tree. One of the most beautiful pieces of magic ever made. Absolutely gorgeous. And now, possibly worth more than the ring. So, if you would accept this, <laughs> still a quiver. For those who think that perhaps it was all mechanical, can I just take these off and, and show you something? The oranges were real and they would be passed around the audience. In fact, just before this one goes for the viewers at home, can I just show you? that they really are real oranges. And if you'd hand those out, Debbie, to the various people around. Can I just have, oh, you haven't got a cloth. Never mind. sorry, it's okay. I just didn't want anybody to cut themselves with that. It's very sharp. Now, the next thing that would happen on the tree is, oh, the top orange, which was not real, would open. Two butterflies would rise into the air, bringing with them the handkerchief, and also bringing with them a ring. Caroline, would you just come to where I'm standing? And over here, can I just show you, there is a ring attached here. Would you say that that was the ring from Cartier? Yes. Yes? It is indeed. And if we just remove that at fingertips and give it back to you, with grateful thanks to your company and to you for coming here this evening, and also to Michael, to Jean Gaon, to Robert Houdin for the imagination. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.